Live from Las Vegas, it's the Q covering HPE Discover 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for Silicon Angle Media's the Cube. It's our coverage of HPE Discover 2017, our seventh year covering HP Discover, now HPE Discover. I'm John Firth, my co-host Dave Vellante, our next two guests, Paul Miller, Vice President, Software Defined and Cloud Group Marketing at HPE. Welcome back to theCUBE, CUBE alumni, Dinner Yeo, System Administrator at BYU, Brigham Young University. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, welcome back. Thank you. Welcome to theCUBE. So tell us, to be here. So tell us, what's your experience at Vegas so far? What's, your, what's the take here uh, from, from your perspective on what's happening at the show, your takeaway? Uh, a lot of exciting technology um, with HPE. Some things that I wasn't aware of what they were doing. Um, and I'm very impressed, pretty impressed. Like what? What's, uh, what are the things that... Uh, one of the things I was just telling Paul is their memory-driven computing with uh, genomic research. Uh, I'm with the College of Life Sciences, specifically at Brigham Young University. And we have people doing research in that area mapping the human genome, for example. We've got you know, people doing DNA uh, analysis and so forth. So Paul, computing, that, that was really the Meg Whitman keynote really yes. redefining compute, that's the, yep. the vision and the messaging. Hybrid cloud, obviously the, the center of the action. How does that fit into the portfolio with hyper-converged still on fire? I mean, IT is just getting more automated away, but it's more scalable yep. infrastructure. Yeah, so we see um, you know, our mission in our organization is to drive software-defined everything, right? And hyperconverge is all about software-defining and making virtualization environments easy and the SimpliVity and the SimpliVity architecture, which is built on rich data services, will enable us to take software-defined storage to the next level to make it super, super scalable and extensible and give customers that resilience that they need, the inline dedupe, compression, all those great technologies. You'll see us you know, push really hard in the hyperconverged space. As you say, it's on fire. And I can tell you, the sales are on fire, the sessions here are on fire, standing room only for every SimpliVity session, hands-on labs, book beyond capacity with people loving and learning the technology. But we're not stopping there. We're going to take that same technology and embed it in, in our synergy uh, uh, offering. So just think about the ability to compose and recompose highly scalable software-defined storage for enterprise applications and enterprise scale, and then you'll also see it be a key part of uh, our technology uh, on the new stack. So, so a lot of cool things, the sessions are really hot and on fire, as you say. So Paul, if we go back to like the 2009 time frame, it was converged infrastructure, yeah. HP at the time kind of coined the term, and then, and then it, but essentially it was, some compute, some storage, and some networking kind of screwed together yeah. and, and you know, pre-tested and pre-engineered yeah. and that's all, all, all good, but it's really evolved dramatically. And when you think hyper-converged, you think software-defined, um, software-defined everything. Yeah. That's kind of what Synergy was all about, fluid pools of infrastructure. We heard yeah. you guys talking about that last Discover. So tell us, help us understand SimpliVity and how that fits in that portfolio. Okay, so yeah, so the, the whole convergence thing was all about static building blocks, right? You built them, you deployed them, but they were really static. What we're trying to go to is fluid pools of everything. So think about SimpliVity being a fluid pool of storage that you can compose and recompose for different workloads. And in our, in our overall portfolio, the biggest advantage we have, like with a Synergy product, is the ability for a customer who has, needs the scalability and resilience of SAN today, to be able to, on, the time you're deploying an application, compose it for that workload, but now I want software defined because I may need some uh, a lower cost basis, be able to, at time of deployment, at time of, of provisioning, deploy it there. So we see it this being a very complementary strategy where now we have composability from software defined all the way up to you know, the largest you know, uh, SAN type uh, software architecture. All right, Danny, let's get into sort of your situation. So, can you help us you know, paint a picture of what's going on in your shop? You know, what are the challenges that you're having? What are the drivers that are affecting your, your IT decisions? And take us through sort of what you're doing with infrastructure. Absolutely. Um, so, before we got into a hyper-converge, we were essentially like everybody else who, who had not been exposed to hyper-converge. We have the traditional server stack, you got compute notes, you got uh, fabric, uh, you got storage notes, you got, and, and then you got 
the fabric for them to communicate. Um, and, um, you know, when you have problems, you get the finger pointing, right? <laughs> and so that was really frustrating. And then, then, of course, you got a hypervisor and all that put in place in the mix. Um, it, it was frustrating. And supporting that, the OPEX was a little bit challenging because, you know, for example, my systems engineer would have to stay sometimes after hours, after five, and you start doing things and, uh, you know, patching, upgrading, you name it. Uh, and sometimes to way after midnight. Uh, that was a problem. We, we were trying to minimize that. The other challenge that I had in my shop was backup. We had a backup window uh, during the weekend that we cannot meet. At some point in time, the RTO and RPO weren't uh, sufficient. And so we had to look at a different strategy. Um, disaster recovery, that was like something unachievable. It's like out there. Yeah, you can't even meet your right? backup windows. I mean, right. forget about sure. disaster recovery, right? So, uh, summer 2014, I went to a VMware user conference, stopped by the uh, SimpliVity, SimpliVity booth, and uh, they asked me if I knew about the, the technology. I didn't. So they spent some time explaining that to me. Um, and after that, they, they asked me if I just had a little bit more time so that they can do a dem demo for me, a demonstration. Uh, during the demonstration, the, the engineer basically did a failover from California to either Boston or New York. It was in seconds, 22 seconds if I remember correctly. And then he says, well, that you know, simulated a, a disaster and so you, you fail over, and if the disaster is now all over and averted, you want to fail back, right, to your primary location, and he did that again in seconds. I was blown away. I was sold. It reminded me of when, in 2005, I saw V-Motion from VMware. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, you know, everybody went, wow. Game, <laughs> game changer, yes, isn't it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I thought to myself, I need to, you know, it's like that movie, I gotta get me one of these. <laughs> and so I asked them to come over and uh, visit us on campus, do a deep, deeper dive of the technology and so that we can ask questions back and forth. They did, and then we, we decided to do a proof of concept. So we did that late 2014, and uh, after the proof of concept, we were, we were convinced that was the technology. So you had required. to make sure it was real? Yes. You did the proof, now, of, con proof of concept? I have Sorry, go ahead. No, please, continue. So I had the unique uh, situation where after I have acquired SimpliVity and uh, was running it in production, uh, a competitor, I'll just put it that way, came in and asked us if we would consider doing a POC with their product. And we're like, you know, I've already bought, bought this. And, he, and they said, not a problem. Uh, we would like you to try our product, and if our product is superior, we want to swap out those SimpliVity boxes. So I thought, well, what do I have to lose? <laughs> so I had the opportunity to run both hyper-converged technology side by side. Okay. As we were uh, thinking how best to really test which one works, which one's superior, or if they're essentially the same thing, uh, we, we had an engineer suggest, why don't we uh, simulate a drive failure? start pulling out drives. And so we did. <laughs> we started pulling out drives, uh, and I had three nodes on, uh, with, with SimpliVity, and on the other, I had four nodes in a box. Um, as we pulled out the, uh, after we pulled out the sixth drive, the other technology failed. We couldn't recover data, basically. We'd have to send it to a data recovery center. SimpliVity was just, con you know, it was business as usual, it was going, no, no sweat. Um, because you had it replicated? Is that right, or? Not yet, we okay. haven't had it replicated, oh, okay. but it was in the Federation. Just, just all synchronous. So it's, it's their technology, right? It's the RAIN and, and, and RAID architecture. Yep. And, and that's the thing, the RAIN arch architecture that protected us. So we were able to pull the six drive, it was still continuing, it threw up a lot of fla flags, yep. uh, alerts, and uh, we knew that the there no were... Redundancy at the node level, yes. as opposed to just the drive but level. But that, yeah. that, little, that little experiment basically proved to us that we bought the right, the right thing. It, it validated our, our acquisition. So you did the bake-off. That's awesome, right? Yes. So what did you say to the other guys when they came back and said, hey, Well, we asked them first. Not working. We asked them first, <laughs> help. Your box is not responding, help. They threw up their hands. 
In the it's air. your fault. <laughs> yeah. Here's the answer. You got finger pointing. Here's the answer. You, you'll love this, right? The answer is, you know, you can't just pull out the drive. You got to time them. You know, you can't just willy-nilly, you just yank them. Yeah. You've say got that to, to time them. to the tornado that's coming down or yeah, earthquake yeah. that's yeah. happening or flood. Yeah, I mean, how, do you, how do you time those? Yeah, how do you time them? Yeah. So uh, we decided, look, you know, take your product back. We've, we're happy with, with SimpliVity, we'll keep it. This is a huge issue. I mean, Hurricane Sandy, which happened in New York, that oh, yeah. was a game changer for a lot of the folks we talked on theCUBE. You don't know when this is going to come, and literally, this disaster recovery thing is, has to be part of the plan, mm -hmm. and that's really the key. Um, now that you have SimpliVity now that's part of HPE, what's your, what's your uh, world like now with HPE, with SimpliVity? Uh, it's too soon to tell, <laughs> <laughs> really, honestly. But after the keynote yesterday, I'm pretty convinced that uh, SimpliVity has is is in good hands, yep. and and only time will tell, right? So I, I want to just sort of summarize the story because we were throwing in all kinds of buzz, RPO, RTO. So, but basically you had a, a problem with your backup window. That's where this all started. You weren't That's meeting your backup started, windows. Yes. You really didn't even have a disaster recovery, a, a, an adequate disaster Not recovery at all. plan. So RPO is recovery point objective, essentially a measure of how much data you're going to lose. Right, yep. and then RTO is recovery time objective, the time it takes you to get your applications back right. up and running. And of course, nobody wants to lose any data, but there's always some exposure. If you want to spend a billion dollars, maybe you can minimize that to near zero. But, uh, and I presume you didn't spend a billion dollars on this, but no. those were the drivers. <laughs> so you essentially solved your backup window problem, and at the right. same time, you got disaster recovery out of the box. Is that correct? Yes. So backup is in seconds, right? It's only, you know, to, to do a backup uh, takes us only a few seconds, like six mm -hmm. seconds and so forth. We bought, we bought an additional node, put it in a remote site, replicate it to it. Now we can fail over to that node and run only mission critical apps. Uh, and, and when everything's good in the primary location, we can just fail back. And that gives you your disaster recovery. Now in your RPO is what? I mean, what's the... Seconds. seconds. Oh, seconds. seconds. Yeah, okay. seconds. Okay, yes. so your RPO is down to, to it seconds. It is that impressive, Okay, yes. so you're at risk of losing seconds of data, which is not the end of the world necessarily no. in your world, mm -hmm. and your RTO is uh, minutes? Uh, about there. Yeah. Tens yeah. of minutes kind of thing? No, no. Oh. Minutes. No, just minutes. 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 Yeah. Under 10 minutes. Under 10 minutes, oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, we're not as huge as some other data center. Um, in the College of Licenses. Well, you know, and you're so, not financial so, services. Right. So, so, now, when you, what has been the reaction from the, your user base? I mean, do they even know? Uh, they have it, no clue. They don't it know. is completely transparent to them. <laughs> uh, we, we are now able to do maintenance work during the work day, uh, business hours. We can upgrade, we can patch. Um, they have no clue that this is all going on in the background, which so, is great because now, yeah. My uh, systems engineer does not have to work after five, hardly ever. So is this and why you bought the company? Absolutely. <laughs> we, looked at, we looked at them all. Right. And I mean all of them. And we did similarly. We brought them into our labs. We did failover. We did scalability. And that's another huge advantage of the SimpliVity platform, built and designed for scalability. Uh, compression, because system utilization is very, very important. And you know, SimpliVity had a really great marketing tool that we're continuing, it was their guarantees. Guaranteed 90% capacity savings, guaranteed the failover time, uh, a terabyte of VMs in under uh, five or three minutes. So we're carrying on those guarantees. But what those guarantees actually did was really highlight the architectural advantages that SimpliVity designed in. They took a different approach, right? A lot of people started at, I'm going to simplify the VM management layer. They said, no, I'm going to make the most robust virtualization data services platform in the world. And that's where we really see the core advantage. And again, we looked at them all, we put them through paces, and nobody came close on uh, scalability, availability, disaster tolerance, and simplicity. Paul, what does this mean for your other customers now? I mean, extending out through your portfolio, obviously there's different you know, categories of campus and, and, and different use case, but for the other use cases with the composability uh, vision, how does this fit into the hyperconversion overall? Yeah, so we have, we have multiple customers now who are running uh, hyperconverged and composable in their same shop, where they want to have uh, just virtualization and a simple, easy deployment, whether it be for robo sites or for different work groups, 
drop in SimpliVity, up and running in minutes. There are, other, there are other use cases where they need the high performance of bare metal or they want to move into containers on bare metal and that's where Synergy plays out. We have people like you saw uh, DreamWorks using Synergy for rendering, right? You need bare metal, you need the power. They can compose and recompose for different uh, movies that they do, different animations. They really love that. We were talking about a, uh, a genomics research company we're working with. They're using it for bare metal as well, Hudson Alpha. They're driving bare metal, but they also have hyperconvergence for the developer community who says, hey, I just need to do a few, uh, build a new couple applications. Log in self-service, get, uh, get your work done on a few VMs, and then when they're done, then they'll move that research into uh, bare metal. So a lot of different use cases across the board. Well, what I love about that, John, is it's horizontal infrastructure that yeah. can support multiple workloads and multiple applications, which is kind of in infrastructure nirvana for a pro you know, a, a practitioner, right? I mean, sure. having that single platform that you can throw multiple apps and workloads at is, I mean, we've not had that in the industry before. No. Right? no. no. And, so, and building it on one view makes things easy for our, for our customers to manage across the board. So yeah, we're seeing, I mean, What's interesting about, I think, where we're heading is we're not only working with you know, IT leads, but now developers are starting to become part of our, uh, of our core customers who we're talking to. Yeah, you guys are really, really checking the boxes on making IT easier, and as it shifts to the cloud and hybrid, you know, this is the kind of thing you want out of the box experiences, literally here in, in recovery, this is a good yep. trend. Paul, thanks so much. I know you guys yep. got a hard stop and you got to roll to another appointment. Danny, thanks so much for sharing your story. You, yeah. Love that story, real Thank practitioner. You know, on the ground, you know, on the front lines, doing the Bake Off, SimpliVity story. Great, great job. Thanks so much for sharing. It's theCUBE with more live coverage from HPE Discover after the short break. Stay with us.